Parents, stop thinking that your child's going to master reading at school. I know it sounds odd, but let me explain why. I thought my child would learn to read when they went to school because they're there all day, they've got a reading expert guiding them, and surely that's what the focus is. But I was dead wrong. This is the reason. Reading is a skill. It's like riding a bike, walking, talking, catching a ball. All these things you can only really master through practice, good practice. Now, your child's teacher's got a, a class of 30 children. So if they were to do 10 minutes of reading practice with each one, that would take five hours. Of course, they can't do that, can they? And we can't ask our teachers to do something that's impossible. So this is why, as a parent, this is a crucial moment when you can make a huge difference to your child's life. And we can show you tools and guidance that is going to make this so much easier, faster, more fun, less stressful. You know, reading can go on. Learning to read can go on for years, literally. That's the curriculum, normally three years. We're seeing children learn to read in three months, literally. That's quite routine for us. So then, have a think about the impact that that is going to have on your child. So your child learns to read in three months. You know, he's one of the first to learn to read. And by the way, if your child is already beyond that and you're seeing some struggles uh, and it's all getting quite stressful at sort of seven, eight, nine, don't worry, we've got solutions, very fast solutions for that so, so we can fix that too. But ideally, your child learns to read uh, in three or four or five months when they're you know, just four or five. Imagine what impact that has on your child's psychology. What are they thinking? Well, of course, they're thinking, wow, I'm good at this. And what do we, what do we feel when we're good at things? We like it, don't we? I mean, we're all the same. You know, when we're good at something, we say we like it. And then what do we do? We do more of it. We do lots more. And that's the key thing is that when your child gets this sense of being a good reader, they will start to read more and more. And that's a non-linear thing. So it's not about just getting over a little barrier to say, non-reader, reader. It's about getting over that barrier and then becoming a great reader, loving reading. You know, we have parents complaining that their child is needing two or three books a week. You know, how am I supposed to get hold of all these books for this reading machine you've created? Well, that's really what you want, because that's feeding, feeding the mind of that child. You know, when, when you get to teenage years, you know, and you've been reading two or three books a week, that's like a thousand books. You know, is that going to help in the exams? Oh, yeah. It's almost like an unfair advantage, isn't it? The child next door might have only read 20 or 30 books in that time. And those are just the ones they had to read. So this is having an impact on the whole of your child's school career, which is so based on text. All modern education is based on text, isn't it? But what about after? You know, like your child eventually leaves university having studied what they wanted to study because they had every option. But what about when they're in a job interview? What does that employer want? Do they, do they want somebody who's done a lot of reading, is very engaged with the world, has a lot of broad knowledge, will engage with the training materials that every job involves nowadays. Every job requires a lot of ongoing training nowadays. Do they want somebody who can just work their way through that, you know, happily and enthusiastically? Oh yeah, absolutely, of course. So this is not just affecting school, it's all through life, you know, being a great reader, loving reading, really, really helps. And of course, reading is just such a joy in any case, isn't it? It's not just about the, what you can get from it, it's what, you know, the experience is itself. You know, it, you can explore the world in the written word, you can go back in history, you can listen to Cicero talking to you through the written word. So, this is such a huge issue, and so I hope that you'll click to see the ways we can help. And I'm particularly passionate about that because 
I was the kid who didn't learn to read very well. I could read, but I was a reluctant reader. I failed English at 15. You know, I never read a book without having to, and even then I struggled. And so I eventually got to the point of applying to Oxford for uh, engineering because my, my maths was pretty good and uh, my physics. But I, and I did well in the exam. But they said, you know, I hadn't explained my answers properly, which is, it is something they had asked for, but it wasn't in my wheelhouse. It was not what was natural for me. I was getting the answer and moving on, getting the answer and move on. That's somewhat my psychology, I have to admit. So they failed me on that. So this can have a life impact. And by the way, I'm good. I've really got over it. So don't worry. The, so this is really important. Now, I did become an enthusiastic reader in my 20s. Something shifted for me. I think when I was living abroad, learning for, to read and write French, I think that's shifted something for me. And so I became a passionate reader. And that's what I want for every child. So we've re-engineered the whole read, learn to read process. We've made it so much easier using the neurology, the the, the, all the research that's been done on how the brain works, we've used that to make the process so much easier and quicker and less stressful for you. And so I really hope you're going to take benefit from that and, and give this to your child as a huge opportunity.